Hello and welcome to Beer Tier, the German engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today we are going to start a series within the series. Yes, you heard that right. What we are going to do is we are going through all the geysers in the game and we are trying to tame them. Not necessarily every single one because there are a couple that are just completely worthless in my opinion. So we just gonna omit them. I will mention them, but we are just not gonna do anything with them. It's just not worth your time or mine. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are with the very first one and the first one is our standard water geyser. So let's take a look. First of all, the piping. With the piping, we are just coming all the way around. We have a thermo aqua tuner right here. We can come all the way through here. Then we're going to start with radiant liquid pipes. I made them out of aluminum, but it really doesn't matter what you make them out. Then come back up around, cool on our steam turbine while we are at it and back into the thermo aqua tuner. You could put down something like a liquid reservoir, but it's not really needed for this case here. But it is definitely possible to do so. Next on the list is our power. Oh, of course, with our power, we are coming along. We are powering everything up. This right here, this is a def generator. And all it does is it provides as much power as I need. No more random battery banks off on the side here. I finally activated the def mode and got me the def generator. Isn't that something? Here on the top, standard procedure. We are just coming out with one heavy joint watt plate, leaving one space and coming out with the second one to minimize the heat transfer as much as we can. Next, let's take a look into automation. We have up here on top a liquid pipe thermo sensor that comes into our thermo aqua tuna. And right down here on the bottom, we have a thermo sensor, better to say two, one for each pump. I put two pumps in there just so I have more availability. You can do one, you can do eight. I really don't care. You can do whatever you feel like. It is expandable and basically until infinity. On top of that, you don't have to use a thermo sensor. You can put in a hydro sensor. You can put in a simple switch, whatever you feel like it is possible. So what exactly are we doing here? Well, let's run it. We have an Escher waterfall right here. Yes, I found another very practical use for it, just in a different way of how to build it. Right here we have a manual airlock, airflow tiles all the way around. And when we press F4, I just have some hydrogen in here, it doesn't matter really. One tile of hydrogen, that's the important one, and one tile of carbon dioxide. And that is the reason why we have a manual airlock here. We cannot put airflow tiles right there or our gas will go in there. Theoretically, we could if we put two tiles in here, but that's just a more elegant solution in my opinion. Then airflow tiles all around. They currently have a vacuum in it, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. We don't have to have a gas in there. It's just because I'm in sandbox mode. We could put in there whatever we want to. The general idea is that we are filling this thing here up while this thing here is going. Once it becomes dormant, we're going to cool it down and then we can take it out. That is the general idea that I have here. Uh, it will take quite a while until this thing here is full. We can see the temperature is slowly but steadily going up and it will go slightly back down once this thing here actually stops. And there we have it. It just stopped. Let's take a look. We are at 43 degrees, 43.3, 43.2 and slowly but steadily we are coming a few degrees back down. It is going to be a constant up and down and up and down and up and down. We are slowly but steadily going higher and higher and higher though because we cannot take as much heat out as we are putting in. But that is okay. Not a big problem. We're just going to roll with it. As soon as this thing goes dormant, we will definitely have the time to take enough heat out to get our water in the temperature that we desire. You just want it at 95 degrees. You can serve yourself the hassle and just take it as it is no big problem on to the next one and here we are with our second candidate the cool steam vent and this system here is meant to be built if you actually want to take the water out in a reasonable temperature therefore we are cooling it down so let's take a look with f6 we can see we are just coming through here once again with radiant liquid pipes not a big problem coming all the way around cooling down our steam turbine on the top and then feeding it into our thermo aqua tuna the exact same build as we have over on the left here for our water geyser really no difference at all we're filling this here up on the bottom with polluted water and on the top with water just so to get the air out it's literally it's this right forward in the top here i have hydrogen it doesn't have to be hydrogen it's helpful if it is because of the thermal conductivity but in reality, if you have oxygen or carbon dioxide or anything else, it will work just as fine because we're cooling it down with our radiant liquid pipe. The other thing that's important for the use case here is the thermal sensor down here on the bottom. It is set up to below 25 degrees. That is just a random number that I chose. Again, there's no real world use for it right now. But if you wanted water at 25 degrees, what you can do is set this one here up to 25 and set this one here up to 25. And when we turn it on, we can see that the thermal aqua tuna is actually running. It's cooling down our water. It's coming through at 15 degrees. It's cooling down the steam. It's cooling down the water. And eventually our liquid pump here will turn on and actually extract our water. It's just a matter of cooling it down enough. And right at the moment it's erupting. So we can actually see that the water temperature is still going down. Steam 
is nowhere near as potent as actual water coming out at 95 degrees. That is great. That's what that should look like. But let's give it a second here and see if we can cool this thing here down to actually a temperature where we are extracting the water. And here we have it. Our pump just turned on. We are still pumping water through. Our, our thermal aqua tuna has stopped until the temperature is high enough again. And let's take a look down here. Where does the water go? In a tiny little tank that I built here in the floor at a nice 24 degrees. Isn't that great? Yeah, I would think so. The only downside is that we really don't get a hell of a lot of water out of here. So I would not recommend doing this here because again, we are not getting a hell of a lot of water. You would have to be really desperate to do something like this. So let's go on and do something more useful with it. How about that? And this right here is what more efficient looks like to me. I like to use those cool steam vents for spawns. So what do we have here? Let's take a look first in power. That's probably making the most sense. Up here in the corner, I have my little def generator. So let's take a look. Currently, it's only powering those two pumps right here and those two gas pumps. These here for hydrogen and these here for oxygen. That's where I'm just going to put this stuff for right now. I don't have a use for it, but I'm going to use it here in a second to actually power up the system. You have to input a little bit of manual power beforehand and it is good enough to put a hamster wheel here on the top and have a dupe run in it. That is good enough to get it up and going for it a second until it is actually self-sustainable. But we're just using the def generator for right now. In F6, piping pretty straightforward. We just have a liquid pipe and with the liquid pipe we're coming all the way up to here. Not a big deal. That's just how it's gonna go. Here we have our piping for gas. Let's see, this pipe right here comes all the way through here. Uh, don't mind this here for a second. We will just use it to filter out some bad gas so we don't worry about it that much. And then we're going to come up to here and pump it all into there. That is literally what that is going to look like. That's where our hydrogen is going to go. And then from the from this storage here, we are pumping the hydrogen over into our gas generator. Pretty easy and straightforward. Then the other pump right here, it's coming out of here with a little gas bridge all the way to the top and into the other infinite storage that is hooked up to nothing it's just sitting there those are just my preferred ways of doing it to have it first stored because usually you don't use everything immediately then last but not least let's take a look at our automation i just have of course my infinite storages here automated there's no question about it then right here i have the atmos sensor the atmos sensor is set to about 500 grams and the smart battery i actually haven't even set it up yet the high threshold is 90 the low threshold is 10 and that's how we're going to run this thing as soon as it gets down to 10 percent power this here will turn on all the way until the smart battery is filled up to 90 percent if that never happens this thing will run forever that's just how that is going to go. So let's run the game and you will see that absolutely nothing is happening. <laughs> Once again, it's just how that sometimes works. Because what we have to do is we need to hook this thing here up to power. So let's give it power. And as soon as we have power, we can turn this hydro sensor here in the bottom that I just have here for good measure. I wanted to have it above 100 kilograms. I always want to have a little bit of water down here and I just want to be able to control it. That is the general idea. And right here, we now have a mixture of gases in there that is expected. I just forgot to build the same system that I built over here. That is just my preferred way for right at the second to get the gas out. You can put a filter in there. You can just vent it into space. That's what I would usually do just somewhere around here. But I want to preserve my vacuum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into base, grab an insulated tile, plop a few into here, plop a couple into there. That's fine. And then in ventilation, we're going to grab us a high pressure gas vent and plop it right there. So the gas will never actually reach this here. It's just going to get vented into this tiny little space right here until we can be 100% sure that it is only oxygen. So let's see. Up here on the top, are we getting slowly but steadily to 500 grams? I would think so. Our overview, that is all hydrogen. And now the system is primed and ready to roll. Over here, we should see in a second hydrogen coming out. And it's full of hydrogen, no oxygen to be seen which means we can go into our destroy filter, grab buildings, get rid of this one, get rid of that one, turn this one here back on so we can actually pump it in there. And now everything that we are pumping out goes straight into our infinite storage. Simple as that. Now that we are getting some hydrogen in here, I can actually turn the pumps on. Let's take a look. The pumps are pumping their gas over and into there, which means on the other hand, I can disconnect this wire right there. We will not need it anymore because now it is self-powered no more power input is needed of course not for our gas pumps that is too much currently it is only enough what we are producing for the spam and for this liquid pump down here in the bottom it's literally that simple here i have some temp shift plates just to keep the temperature straight it's not really needed that much it's mainly for the steam to faster condensate really that simple not a big deal if you don't have them it's not the end of the world that is how simple you build a spam with a cool steam vent Literally couldn't be much simpler than that. Of course, all the sizes here can vary. Mine is seven tiles wide and from the bottom is nine tiles high, but that is really not necessary. So let's move on to the next one. 
Over here, we have a saltwater geyser, and the saltwater geyser is a very similar setup to the other setups. Just a tiny little difference here. We have a desalinator built in. And as well, we have atmosphere dock here. It doesn't have an atmosphere in it. It doesn't have dupes. So that is just to show to get in here, we need to have an atmosphere or our dupes will get burnt. And we certainly do not want that. So what are exactly are we doing here? Let's see. We, of course, coming through with our loop once again to make sure that we can cool it down properly all the way through. Radiant liquid pipes here on the bottom to actually cool down the actual water. Down here on the bottom, let's see. I have two sensors right here. A little bit more elaborate. Is it really needed? I don't think so, but we can do that. I have a thermos sensor right here and right beside it a hydro sensor with an end gate right there and a connection over to our pump. Why am I doing this? Again, I always like to have a little bit of water left here on the bottom so I actually know what the hell is going on here. And with the temperature, I can say if the temperature is below 30 degrees and only if it is below 30 degrees, I want to use this here. That is the general idea. Other than that, power wise, I mean, of course, we have to power our atmosphere dock. We don't have to power our door, but I might as well since the power is freed right now. Power our pump, power our desalinator and power our thermal echo tuner. And then our standard way to get the energy from our steam turbine back out. Currently, the saltwater geyser here is dormant. So what we are going to do is we're going to take our brush and we're going to come through and we're just going to brush in some salt water, plenty of it at 95 degrees. 95 degrees is the temperature it is actually coming out of the geyser. So that works perfectly. Let's drop it down to the floor and we can see that now the hydro sensor turned on because we have more than enough pressure. But at the same time, the thermal sensor turned off because it is way, way, way too hot. Now the thermal aqua tuna turns on, it realized, oh, something's going on down there. We, we need to do something about that. And it comes down with cold water. Currently at, let's take a look here, roughly, well, 60 degrees because it's coming through here. It will take a tiny little bit. I pumped a hell of a lot of water in here at once. Probably too much to actually make this feasible to watch it. So let me take a little bit back out. How about that? That was probably a hell of a lot too much. Not items, elements, preferably. Let's get rid of this row, this row, and this row. Let's leave only the bottom row. That should be plenty to cool down. Should also go a hell of a lot faster. And now our system is working. Our pump is running. We are extracting water out of the desalinator. The desalinator takes 5 kilograms a second, emits 4,650 grams of water a second, and gives us also 350 grams of salt. As soon as the salt storage that we can see down here on the bottom, we currently have, what, 600 kilograms of salt in there. When that thing is full to the brim with salt, a dupe has to come by and empty it out, which is why we have up here our atmosphere dock and our door. We need to get in there if we like it or not. That is just how that has to happen. Down here on the bottom, let's see, our water has a nice 27 degrees. Isn't that something? And here we have our four vents, exactly as I imagined them. Over here we have our water geyser. Here we have our cool steam vent where we are actually going to use the water for drinking water or whatever the hell else we want to use it. Our second cool steam vent, which we actually use to power up a spawn. Isn't that something? And on the right side here we have a salt water geyser. And that one we use to get some salt and some fresh water out of it. Water is definitely the worst option for a cool steam vent. The cool steam vent should really be used for a spawn in my general opinion. But I think that is all I have for you today. Next time around, we're going to take a look at volcanoes. That's going to be interesting. But with that, I say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video and comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you have any better solutions? I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.